champion. We beat every team that we could, and, and we were playing at Notre Dame, and uh, we, we had every opportunity. That, that fumble killed us, but at the end of the game, which people don't talk about, we can't. We went down for a chance at a two-pointer, and, and Jimmy could have kicked the extra point, just like Nebraska could have kicked the extra point. He could have kicked the extra point. Miami probably would have ran it out and gone for national champions, uh, but he went for the two. We missed it, and uh, so basically it was an every-other-year thing from there. 80, you know, 87, 89, 91 national champions. So, but every year from 83 to what, 92, we were playing for, basically for the national championship. It was a phenomenal 10 year period. You're, you're, you're making me jealous. Listen to that. Right? <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not old enough to be alive for those, for those teams, but fast forward to 2020. Now, what are your thoughts on coach Diaz? I mean, obviously year one, was a little rough, but what are your thoughts? You know, he got a new offensive coordinator. He has D.R. King. What are your thoughts on the 2020 Hurricanes? I, I'm, uh, you know, I usually drink the Kool-Aid, so I've got to say that I'm a homer. <laughs> and it does kill me, you know, when a lot of some fans have that negative spin. You know, ma- last year, I thought last year's team, the 2019, just just to rewind a bit, you know, we, we had the, the, the game against the Gators. We could have won. And then we know we ran into kicking problems. If we don't have those kicking problems, who knows what happens? I mean, that, that, that team just did not know how to win. We got snake bit so many times. Uh, you know, even the Virginia Tech game, we ended up being a very good team, Virginia Tech. You know, we, we were down 20, well, we were down 28 nothing in that game and, and stormed yes. back. And we basically were going to take the lead and then we missed the extra point. So, so, so much went against us in that season. I don't know what happened at the end. I mean, we, 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 were, we were on course for an opportunity, an Orange Bowl game, and then we just fell apart. But so I'm going to discount that because I looked at, what I do is I like to look at history and I look at so many coaches that have a tough beginnings. I mean, I know people talk about Nick Saban in his first year at Alabama, what they won, like uh, six and seven or six and six. But when he started off at Michigan State, he really wasn't that great either. And uh, oh, at uh, Obergon, who won this year for LSU, he was not that good of a coach until he got this LSU team. I mean, he coached in Miami. What he, with, he was an uh, assistant at Miami, I think it was 80, 87, 89, 91. I'm sure you guys know. Mm -hmm. So, but this year I am ecstatic because you know why Manny went out and did everything that he could do. You know, what what makes a great coach is someone that goes out and realizes, you know, realizes the, 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 the deficiencies in the team and does something about it. What did we need? We needed a kicker, right? So he went out and got the top, one of the top kickers in the nation who beat us in the game against FIU. All right. We need, we needed an offensive coordinator. He got out pretty much one of the best offensive coordinators in the sport, a young, aggressive. Everybody was saying, Miami's got to go to the spread. Miami's got to go to the spread. Miami's got to go to the spread. So what did we do? He got a guy that can run that offense. First time in a lot, maybe ever, Miami's going to that offense. He needed a quarterback. He didn't just get any quarterback. He got a Heisman contender. Mm. And so everything you wanted him to do, he needed a defensive guy. We lost Garvin, a couple of guys. So what did he do? He went out and probably got, he got the best def- defensive lineman around. So what, what mm. he went ahead and every single thing that we needed to do, he went and did. I think, you know, that makes a great coach. And I, I you know what? Obviously, I'm drinking Kool-Aid. People will say, let him win. But one year does not determine a guy's career. Look back at all the great coaches, like I said, and look at yeah. how they started. I mean, and look, you know, so the bottom line is he did everything he could. I mean, we were so excited for that spring game. And uh, obviously, I'm excited two ways. Being a fan and our business depends on the team playing well and also the team playing, period. So, But I was excited for the spring game, and I think the fans were, too. So I think it's going to be an awesome year. I, I do think we will be on the field this year. I do think we play. If we don't play in August, we may move it back a month or two. But I see us playing a full season, and I see the Canes being very, very competitive this year. And more exciting Let's go. Than here. Love it. Yes. Yeah. Hey, man. Yes. Love your man. And, and I want to add with, with what you said about Manny Diaz getting the, the right offensive coordinator. Um, you know, the narrative around the Canes for a long time was that Miami runs a pro-style offense. You know, we're quarterback you. Uh, we, we run the pro-style. Like, that's just part of our DNA. Um, if you remember after the Dan Enos hire – when a lot of people wanted a a spread offense type thing, we hired Dan Enos, who's kind of a you know a multiple, but he's kind of grounded in the pro style. He said that same thing. He said, you know, it's it's what we do here at Miami. We run the pro style, and mm-hmm. then kind of blew up in his face, and and he fixed it. And to me, that's huge. That's way bigger than making the mistake of you know being stuck in that Miami runs a pro style or whatever. So 
I, I just want to echo your point. I love that Manny is able to evaluate himself and make the changes that he needs. Exactly. It takes a big man to do that. And the other thing he did, I mean, people were down on Manning and, you know, you watch, so you, you, you know, you look at social media and unfortunately a lot of negativity comes out. People like to jump on the bandwagon, but they were, they were so down on him for the Alonzo Hindsmith that he didn't pick him up. But then he goes ahead and picks up Ed Reed as the football operations, which I don't know what Ed's going to do or not, but he can't hurt being there. The fact that Manny brought him and he made that right call, the fact that Ed wanted to join Manny, okay, whatever he does, just lending his name. I mean, one of the greatest football players, if not the greatest football player to ever play at Miami and also possibly in the NFL, one of the top 10 mm. players of all time. Definitely the best, uh, best uh, you know, secondary or defensive man probably to ever play. But uh, you know what? A guy, anyone that understands that their errors, understands their mistakes and goes out and changes it, that's the guy that I want to be, you know, driving my, uh, you know, you know, my ship, directing it, to, you know, to better uh, pastures. So I think that I think the uh, the Canes are in great shape. I'm really a big Manny fan. He's a great guy. Every time I've met him, nothing but great. And I think the fact that he made these changes, just the last thing on that, what brought down Al Golden? He refused to change his defense. His buddy D'Onofrio, we're going to go with the defense. I'm going to wear my white shirt. I'm going to wear my tie. I'm not going to make any changes. Unfortunately, his stubbornness Turned yeah. everybody against him. Coach Rick, I love Coach Rick for what he did. He brought this program back. He built the indoor practice facility. And then he went ahead and, you know, he got us 10 wins. He got us our first bowl game in over a decade. He got us 10 wins in over a decade. But you know what? He refused. He wanted to do it his way and refused to change. He realized, you know what? I can't change. I'm going to step down. Yeah. Manny, first coach in a long time to say, you know what? I can do better. We can do better. It's not about me. It's about the team. It's about the you. And that's what he did. So how can we blame a guy for doing exactly what we want? I mean, I'm pumped. I'm fired up. I think you guys can tell. Exactly. <laughs> that's kind of what I was saying. For sure, is that I've said that on an earlier podcast was like, if, if this Rhett Lashley thing doesn't work out, which I would bet my life that it does, because I mean, I just, I don't know. I'm picking the Kool-Aid too, right? If this <laughs> Rhett Lashley doesn't work out like we can't fire Manny over that because he's done exactly what we've asked him to so exactly yeah got a great yep. point there it's, and, it's and, not and a, you know, he, he did everything he was supposed to do for sure and and also the other thing is like you said Brett um Jim like uh Jimmy Johnson first year lost about five games in a row you said Manny mm-hmm. Diaz is in a similar situation where now this is his second year as a head coach. He has to prove himself. Um, I, I think he made all the right decisions. Like you said, on the offensive side, there's still part of the fan base that wish he might have done some things on the defensive side. But I, I think all of UM can uh, can agree that this is this is the year for Manny Diaz to prove himself. Um, if, if he is the guy to take us to that next level, I think this is his make or break year. So uh, I think the biggest question uh, isn't what player is going to do well or what coach is going to develop these kids. I think the biggest question is as long as football season starts, I think we're going to see a great team this year. I I agree. I I think we're going to see a phenomenal team this year. I think it's going to be exciting, energetic. I mean, everyone I've spoke to has said that he is the real thing. I mean, we have the right quarterback for the first time. The offense, it's exciting. Now, you know, they thought, okay, we thought Enos was going to be the guy. We thought Jaron was going to be the guy or, or whoever was going to be. It wasn't. It didn't work out. It's not always going to be perfect. But you know what? Manny made the changes, and I think it's going to be a lot better this year. And uh, this team, I think, can, you know, should be able to win 10 games without a doubt. For sure. That's what we're all, that's what we're all hoping for. I mean, I think everyone in this call, I, I mean, I predict them to win the Coastal this year, and it just – I've I've talked enough about this upcoming team, and we only had one week of spring ball. I'm just I'm just ready for all this to be over and to start talking about Dear King and Rhett Lashley. I just want to I just want to get it going. I agree. We're, we're we're all there. I think we will eventually. We obviously got to get it. We're we're a little bit of a a, a shake up, a, a little bit of a holding pattern. And I do want to say this is you know I, I obviously I'm a little I'm a little older than you guys and. You know, and for anybody out there, this is the first time in history anything like this has happened. But it's an opportunity, you know, to, 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 to redirect your life. There's some tough times for a lot of people. I mean, we're obviously not open our business. A lot of businesses aren't open. A lot of people aren't working. But there's an opportunity to take a step back and decide, what do I really want to do? What do I want to do with my life? How can I be better? Can I, you know, what can I do for other people? There's going to be a lot of new businesses, a lot of new opportunities, a lot of great things are going to happen in this new world. So keep your eyes open. Don't be down and, and try to be as positive as you can. 
I mean, we can be negative. Uh, we can be negative. Our stores closed. We missed. We, we missed spring game. We started off being a new, so you know, the biggest soccer store around. We lost all that, but no reason to be negative. Be positive. You know, there's opportunities that are going to be never before seen. So keep your eyes open. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, no, I love it. I love the positivity, man. I think I, I wish I wish everyone else, you know, myself included, could be a little more like you with, uh, <laughs> with that outlook. Because I'm just, man, I am in the doldrums of this, uh, <laughs> this working right now. <laughs> Feeling. I, I know a lot of people like that. I talk to people all day. I got turned off to a, uh, a motivational speaker named Gary Viner or Gary V, Gary Viner, Chuck, whoever you want to say it. Uh, does a live uh, every uh, and he helps people actually that have shows and books, things like that. But listen to this guy, Gary V, Gary Viner, Chuck on Twitter, on on uh, YouTube. He will get you going. He loves to curse, but he is energetic, <laughs> exciting, and uh, you will not be disappointed if you listen to him. I, I was well, talking about he, a month ago, about a week ago, and he's phenomenal. If he loves to curse, I don't think Marsh's uh, grandparents will be listening to that. You know, you're, you're probably not. <laughs> 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 oh, we, uh, yeah, just to give you the background on that, Brett, we, uh, our first episode, Marsh said hell, I think, and his grandparents <laughs> turned it off and told him how disappointed they were. In it. <laughs> <laughs> it, was pre it was pretty funny. It, it was pretty... Yeah, they were they were in stunned silence. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. You know, some people, yeah, you got to watch out. George Carlin said many years ago the seven, the seven words the, the words that you can't say on TV, radio, or what. It's changed a little bit now, but uh, yeah, you got to be careful about yeah. that. Yeah. To some people, you got to know your audience. That's for sure. So I got a question for you. Um, you know, your your experience as a Canes fan, you know, goes way further back than any of the three of us. Um, I would love if you compare and contrast what it, what the state of the program was like in 1995 after we came down from this this dominant decade in the 80s and early 90s and we kind of had a lull before we picked back up under Butch. Um, would you compare that time with what we're kind of going through now and this last decade and, and just did it feel different? Um, I, that's that's my biggest question is is like is this the same type of thing are you confident that we will be back eventually or does it feel different yeah i think at that time we were just used to winning every year we were used to being you know the powerhouse uh you know and it seemed like you know there, there was the pell grant uh, there were a lot of issues people were saying miami's got to get rid of the program we went from the bad boys of college football to just being you know not a very good team and uh, it was, there was no, you know, after Dennis Erickson, Dennis Erickson took over after Jimmy. He won two championships, uh, some of his own players, a lot of Jimmys. And he did, you know, the program just escaped a little bit. It just was going downhill fast. So you didn't know where it was going to go because people are used to winning every year. And Butch came, even when Butch came, I mean, he's the only, he's the only guy they've ever flown a plane to get rid of and they flew a plane to bring him back. You know, it was like, uh, you know, when he was uh, when he was here, they flew a plane to they fire him. So people wanted him out, too. So it was going really bad for Miami in those years. And people thought they're never going to win again. But Butch turned it around and brought it back. So so we, we got to 2001. We we're really probably the best team in 2000. We we're the best team in 2001, the best team in 2002. And we ended up winning one championship, which is pretty which is pretty difficult to see the amount of talent that we had at that time. Yeah. So we went from not a very good team to a world beater, and then we just fell off the map basically after 2004. I mean, let's, we we went to in what in 16 years we won basically 10 games or 15 years, 10 games once we won one bowl game. So it's been very difficult. Uh, so people are thinking, are we going to win again? But I think people still have some hope. Because there's just so much talent down here in South Florida. There's so many people that still want to come to Miami. So I think. It's been a much longer drought, but I think I think it was more more difficult then because we were just so good and we became we just were we were falling apart. So I, you know, the sad part is now it seems like it's just like the people are just expecting it. The average fan, yeah. you know, they're just like ah, the Canes, the Canes, the Canes. But so the the the, the, the problem there's a lot of apathy with Cane football unless you're a diehard fan. Uh, but 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 I think the big the pro biggest problem here it's a uh, it's been a long-term situation we haven't been good for. I mean, people think we should win national championships every year. That's not the way it's going to be anymore. Back then, you know, Miami was the fastest team, the baddest team. Uh, the SEC has obviously implemented some of the things that Miami was doing, and other teams as well with speed. 
you know, we can beat those guys. Nebraska, you know, you know, they were not a fast team. Oklahoma basically had that wishbone that, that they really didn't have a.